So in this video, we're going to go over how to get started with GitHub. I'm going to go over how to use the commands that GitHub will give us to get a project up and going and how a normal workflow for GitHub should operate. So first off here, we're starting off in VS Code. We have all of our files here. Uh, we've even got our git ignore. Um, but if we go into this folder on our desktop and we look at it and we show the hidden documents, we can see the git ignore, but this has not even been initialized as a git repository. And what that means is when it's initialized, it'll create a little folder inside there that is hidden uh, unless you do the command to show the hidden files. And what it's going to do is it's going to track any change that happens in your project, uh, and it will keep version history to it. Um, now, it'll only do this when you push or when you put in a series of commands, and we'll stage the changes that we want to make. And then when we're ready, we'll commit them and get them ready to be solidified. And then we'll push the changes to our remote repository. So the first step here is going to be to open your web browser. Uh, you should have already signed up to GitHub, and you should have already done the initial stuff to get going here. Uh, this is just covering setting up a new repository. So we're going to click this plus arrow up here. We're going to go to new repository. And in here, we can tell it a whole bunch of things setting wise, settings wise. First off, though, we're just going to put test. Um, just something short and sweet. You can put a description in if you want. Now, you can also choose to add a readme file here. I don't ever do that in the beginning. I always add the readme later. Uh, so I'm going to click create repository. And it gives us this page which gives us a host of different things information-wise about how to get set up. Now, I'm going to make this screen a bit smaller over here, and we're going to open our terminal. Now, one way to open the terminal to make sure you're in the correct folder is to right-click on one of your files over here and open an integrated terminal. So now that I've got my terminal open here, I can go through this list of files. Now, like I said, I'm going to leave the readme file out of it. I'm not going to work with that. I'm just going to do git init here. But what I want to do is I want to pull this folder up here and watch this after I run the git init. And you'll see that invisible git folder. Since I have my hidden file shown, you'll see it pop up up here. So I'm going to hit enter and here it's created the folder that is going to keep up with all my Git information. Now, Git and GitHub are two different things. GitHub's a place to host a remote version of this. Locally, you can run this as long as you have Git installed on your local machine. So uh, you've seen that that folder pops up. Now, for this next command, for the Git add, uh, I don't do one file at a time. So the way that I typically do it, I'll do git, add, and a period. You want a space between each one of these uh, anytime you're doing these commands. Then I'm going to hit enter. And if you'll notice, the only thing that changed was this stuff that's due to my theming. Nothing actually printed out down here. So if you ever want to see what the current status of things in your repository is, you can do the command git status. And it will tell you, like here, all of these things have been added. This one thing, which the DS store changes constantly, but it has not. So these are ready to be committed. So what I can do now, I'm going to run the clear command here so that we can get back to this. And I'm going to do this git commit hyphen m first commit. What this does is or it, it leaves a comment about the commit. And this hyphen M, this little hyphen M is what tells it it's going to be a message. So I can just copy that and paste it over here, hit enter, and it's going to show me that all of these things have been committed and they're ready. Now, this next command here is going to create our main branch. 
Now, if you see master branch at some point, we used to use the slave master terminology with regards to these. Um, we have switched it uh, recently. It's now being referred to as main, uh, which is more appropriate anyway for the repositories. So the main branch is what we want to create here. So we'll paste this next command in. And it has created our main branch now. Now, this next command, this is one of the more important ones. This is what actually connects the remote repository on GitHub's website with the local Git folder so that when you do the push command, it knows where to send those files. So we're going to copy this. And we're going to paste it over here, hit enter, and now we have set up our remote. So now this next command, we use git push u origin main to tell it where we want the push to go, what branch we want it on. So I'm going to paste this in and hit enter, and it pushes the files up. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh this web page over here. And if you'll notice, now we have all of our files in here. Um, anytime we do a push, the time over here is going to be the time that the commit was made, not when the push happened to get it up to get up. Then we always have our comment for the last time it was done. But the beautiful thing about GitHub is if I go into this index.js and I add a comment, I say, showing how we push code up to GitHub. And I save that. And then I'm going to go through the commands and I'm going to send that over here. Now, this is where the common workflow happens. I've made some changes to a project. I'm ready to make sure those go up. So I'm going to do git add, period. And that'll add or stage my files. Get some ready to go. Then I'm going to do git commit hyphen m and my message. Second time is the charm. And I'm going to hit enter and the two files that have changed were committed. Now I can just do git push. So if you'll notice, it's as simple as that. It's those three commands that really make this all work. So you'll do git add, and then a space and a period. You'll do git space commit space hyphen m space, and in quotation marks, you have 50 characters to give it some kind of description. So now that we've done the second push over here, let's refresh the page and look and see what things look like here. So I have these two files, that DS store that is constantly updating changed and my index.js. Now the beauty of all of this is GitHub keeps a history. Your local Git does too, but on GitHub, it's really easy to see the history. So I can click here where it says one minute ago or this little clock. And it shows me both of these commits. So when I click on this, it will tell me every change that happened. So I have this blue one here just showing that this was added to my index.js file. So that's the general process. Now, there's one other thing to take into consideration here. And I think it's a very good habit for you to get the habit of when you first get in a project, do a git pull. Um, now, the reason behind that is if you've got other people contributing to the same project, so let's say I'm going to go in here, this is somebody on another computer, they're over here going, putting in a comment, wish Michael would work more and record less videos, and then they go in and they commit their changes, they've got an update message and it's all been pushed. So then we can go back and we can see here that this has changed. This update index.js push happened. Um, even though it happened locally here on the website, we can still see that it occurred. But what didn't change was our code over here on my computer where I'm working. That part's not automatic. So the way that we get down that change is to do the git pull command. So I'll go git pull. And it pulls down any changes. Now, 
when you're working with these and you've got information that you've sent up and it's not in sync with the stuff on your local computer or there are any problems like that, that where things get out of alignment, you have to go through some extra stuff in order to troubleshoot it. So if you get in the habit of doing the proper workflow on this and pulling down any changes that have happened, pushing up every time you're done with your code, you can really prevent a lot of problems that way. Now, we're going to go in here. We're going to say that's a snooty comment. I don't want that in my project anymore, but I do want to declare my array. And then we'll just put an array in here. And that's the changes we're going to do. So now the workflow, when you're ready to push things up, is git add period git commit hyphen m new changes to array on index.js and then enter and then git push is all I have to do to push it on up. And so those changes were pushed and I can go back over here and refresh my page. And I can go to this index.js and I can see that beautiful array I made is already there. Now, GitHub is not just a way to back up your files. It's really intended to be more of a constant process. So when you finish working on something, you push it up, it preserves the history of what you did during that time period in smaller chunks to where if you need to go back and restore something, you can. There's a host of commands and the well is deep on what you're able to do with all of the information that is tracked from your Git repository. The deeper you get into learning about this, the more useful it becomes. So I highly encourage that you get very familiar with Git, learn all that you can.